Okay guys, I'm at the market and I'm gonna take you on a little walk through. It's just a bunch of aisles of ladies making smoothies with fruit and vegetables. And there are just the fruit aisles. together and I'm going to show you what I've been making for lunch here um, pretty regularly is a warm quinoa salad and I'm doing it warm today because we are in Cusco which is at 11,200 feet and consequently it's a little bit chilly hence why I'm wearing my sweatshirt in my kitchen <laughs> um, okay so um, so warm quinoa salad and I basically do it with whatever kind of veggies I find at the market and I've been having so much fun getting a whole huge variety of delicious fresh vegetables from our local market as well as things like quinoa which they sell there and um, today I found some fresh basil and I'm so excited to use it. Okay, so we're going to start by making the quinoa because that's going to take a little bit of while. A little while. Um, especially on my burner, which is just a gas burner. I'll show you that when I get there. Okay, first step when you're making quinoa is to make sure you have the right ratio of quinoa to water. And the thing is, you can measure, but it doesn't really matter what measurement you're using. So I use this mug, and then I just do one part quinoa and two parts water. So whether this is a cup or not, doesn't really matter. Whether it's a cup and a half, doesn't really matter. As long as you have the same ratio by volume. So I've got one mug full of quinoa here, and the only thing here is that you really need to sift through it. So all I'm going to do is sift through here with my hand and pick out any little bits that look like things I don't necessarily want to eat. They're hard to keep hold of though. Okay, and then to rinse I just put enough water to get over the quinoa and then just rub it with my hands like this. And then I just pour it off. It doesn't matter if you get all the water off. And if you lose a few grains, then that's okay too. Now normally I would do all of this sorting and rinsing right in a pot so that I could just get it going and cook it from there. But what I wanted to do today was toast some spices before I get the quinoa in there. And they want to have a dry pot. So what I'm gonna do is the quinoa's in the bowl and I'm gonna add my spices. I've been having fun at the market because they don't label them. And, you know, you can pretty much guess what things are by their colors. So, like yellow, I'm thinking turmeric. And the brown, I'm going by a sniff test because it could be cumin, it could be coriander. And I'm pretty sure it's cumin. So this is what I'm working with for cooking. It's just a gas hot plate kind of thing. And you've got to light it by match. I'm going to light both of these. Because what I will do is get some water in the kettle boiling while I get the spices toasting, I'm going to turn the spices down because this heats up really, really quickly. The pot is very thin. And then, oh, it went out of me. And then, once the spices are toasted, I'll add the quinoa to toast them all. And then the, um, and then the water. And so if I get the water boiling first, it'll be a little bit heated up when I add it to the quinoa. It's important to not burn the spices by moving them around a little bit in the pot while they cook. And as soon as you see them start to brown a little bit or they might give off a little bit of smoke, they're toasted. And then you wanna add your, your quinoa. And, uh, spices are great because they add small amounts of really important nutrients and the Indian spices like cumin and turmeric are especially good for certain essential amino acids. Um, they also have tons of antioxidants and they're starting to smoke a little bit. So I'm gonna add my quinoa. And it's wet, so it's going to sizzle a little bit. And it's nice um, to give the quinoa a little bit of a toast as well. That'll help reduce its bitterness. So this is kind of like a pilaf. Most people, when they make pilafs, will use oil to toast the spices and the grains. But you don't need to. And what I find, personally, is that when you toast them dry, it actually brings the flavor out more from the spices and from the grains. Whereas when you use oil, it kind of keeps the flavors within themselves. So it depends what you like, um, but I like doing it like this. 
And then as soon as that gets toasted a little bit, then you can add your water. And it's not boiling yet, but it's at least hotter than it was when it came out of the tap, which is freezing cold. So again, volume is what's important, not necessarily the measure. So I'm going to do two of these for my one of quinoa. Just a little shake of salt helps the quinoa cook. And then put a lid on so the water doesn't evaporate. You want to bring it to a boil, so I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit until it gets boiling. And then you want to turn it down as low as possible. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is an onion, which is cebolla, as my market lady is teaching me. And some garlic, which is just gorgeous. I bought this from a lady that all she had on her table was garlic and potatoes, which was awesome, so I got some of those. And some ginger, which I was very excited to find. Ginger is very warming to your system, so while we're cool here, it's nice to get the spices and the ginger and all that stuff going. So the quinoa is going to take a little while to cook, about 20-30 minutes, so you can take your time chopping your vegetables and maybe try to uh, learn the names of them in Spanish. So um, I, I've been going to this one lady at the market for my vegetables, and she's been slowly teaching me the names, which I could look up, of course, but it's much more fun to have her teach me. So I've got cebollas for onion, pimiento for peppers, um, espinacre for spinach, I think that's right, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, what else have I got? Green beans, I forget what she calls those. So again, someone can, uh, can chime in. I know there are lots of you out there who speak Spanish, so you can help me too. Okay, so those and I forget tomatoes too. See, I have to keep going back every day so that I can get my lessons from her. And um, I think this is palta. Oh, got him. Okay, so I've got my onion, garlic, and ginger chopped up and going in the pan. And normally I wouldn't use this kind of non-stick pan, but uh, when you're traveling, you gotta work with what you got. So I just stir this occasionally. And the pan has now gotten hot, so I'm going to add just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You can also use veggie broth or just some water if you prefer. You don't need very much at all. That was about a teaspoon or less. And it really helps if you add that once the pan is hot, because it lessens the time that the oil is exposed to the heat. And what the oil does, for vegetables is it coats the vegetables. You don't have to worry about coating the pan like you would if you were cooking meat or eggs or something like that. So for this case, it's all about the veggies. So leave those to cook a little bit and then you can chop up the rest of your vegetables. Next into the pan is going to be some green beans which I just rinsed and trimmed and then chopped into bite-sized pieces. And then after that is going to be some red pepper and then some tomatoes. And at the end, I'm going to put in some avocado just to warm it up, along with some fresh basil and some spinach, which I'm going to wash and chop. So this pan will hold more than it looks, but um, I usually get a little carried away with my veggies and pile it way too high. We do have another pot, but it's full of a soup that Phil made last night that we're going to have for dinner tonight. And um, so I'm just going to stir this through very carefully. I've got a pinch of salt in here as well, which really helps to bring the flavor of the veggies out and soften them and just make it taste all around nice. So uh, you don't need much, but a little pinch of salt is very, very good. Okay, so my quinoa is cooked and it's got a nice yellow color from the turmeric. And you could toss this in with the veggies, or rather in my case, I would probably toss the veggies into the quinoa because it has a bigger bottom. But Phil eats a lot more than I do, but I still like to get the same amount of veggies. So what I do is put a bigger portion of quinoa in his bowl, a smaller portion in mine, and then I season it on the bottom to make sure it, um, it tastes really nice. And one thing I'm going to do is a lime, which I've developed a lime juicing technique here that avoids the seeds when I don't have a strainer. So I cut it in half and then cut it in quarters, and then I just cut the middle out. It depends what kind of knife you have as to how well this is going to go. And then I just pull the middle out and any seeds come with it. And then I can squeeze a quarter of the lime on the quinoa, and then the other half I'll use on top of the veggies. Limes are used so much here. 
I went to a market in Lima and they had an entire aisle of just lime vendors. All they were selling was lime. That was all they had at their stand. It was pretty fun. So, we got mine on there too. And then I'm also going to put some Sacha Inchi oil on top, which is really high in omega-3. And because Phil and I haven't been able to grind flax for ourselves, we've been having some Sacha Inchi. Sacha Inchi is 48% omega-3, which is even more than flax. And the important thing there is that you need a good ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. And most plant oils, like olive oil, has more omega-6 than omega-3. But your body needs more omega-3 than 6. So it's always good when you can get a source of really concentrated omega-3. The only thing you don't want to do with such inchi is cook with it. And same thing with flax. So if you don't have access to such inchi oil, which I don't usually buy it in Canada because it's very expensive. Um, so if you're using flax oil, um, it's the same thing. You don't want to cook with it because it's so high in the omega-3s, which are unstable at heat. Just use it after things have cooked, mix it in, it'll be really nice. Okay, so that's it for the quinoa, and then I'm going to stir in my spinach and fresh basil to my veggies. I might use the quinoa pot because I'm running out of room. And the last thing I'll put on is some avocado that I've just chopped and I'll stir it through to warm it. So Phil and I have been all about the healthy fats in the cooler weather. Really, really nice. Helps keep you warm and satisfied. All right, how's that for a pile of veggies? So um, this is a big serving. So this one is Phil's and that one's mine. Um, so when I say in the recipe that it makes two to three servings, this is why. We have been eating lunch as our big meal of the day. And so this is a big meal. And Phil, and Phil eats big portions. So um, this may probably work out to three or maybe even four portions for a lot of you. But um, it's mostly veggies. It's really, really good. And if you want the recipe, of course, just look below this video. If you're on my site, you'll see it there. If you're not, there will be a link with the video. And if you want more recipes from me every week while I'm traveling through Peru, you can subscribe to my channel. I don't know where the button is. I think maybe up in the corner. And um, that's it. So we are going to go enjoy our massive veggie lunch. Great seasonings, really fresh, nice stuff from the market. Always good.